Ministry, how are we doing tonight? Come on, hey, it's so good to see you. My name is Pastor Jordan. If you do not know me, hello, hello. And hello. this is Pastor Kara. If you do not know her, hello, hello. She got applause and I didn't, that's fine. Hey, we love you guys, we're so glad you're here. Who got to smash a car out there? Wow, Kara. There's, there's nothing better than like taking all of the anger that you have and just like hitting it against a car, but like the only hard part is that you don't really get to see much of the effects. Like maybe I'm just weak, but when I hit it, I was like, there's like a dent this big Yeah, I watched it. you hit it, it was really sad. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that's that. Rude. Next that's rude, that's so week, rude. Escúchame, next week. Here's the deal. He said, listen to me. We are going through our mood series, talking about all the feels. And sometimes, you may know this, we find comfort in food. You know what I mean? Who? What's the comfort food that comes to your mind when you think about it? Tacos? Tacos. Oreos? Mashed ice, potatoes? Yes. Mashed potatoes. But no. No. Meatloaf? Yeah, That's you like meatloaf? Disgusting. Meatloaf's great. Ice cream. Hey, next Team week. Ice cream. Next week, we're super excited. If you guys have ever been to Texas Roadhouse and had the amazing rolls, we're Praise gonna have Lord. so many of those amazing rolls next week. So come bring your friends. We're super pumped. It's gonna be incredible. I, we're continuing in our mood series. I love those rolls and with the butter, mm, nothing gets better. And guys, coming up as well this Sunday, if you are in junior high or in high school, we have our grub groups on Sunday mornings and evenings who's been coming who loves it yeah Woo! okay hold on we need to redo yeah. that who loves grub groups who loves life groups make some noise Woo! thank you that's right so if you're in junior high last week we had shipley's donuts this week we're gonna have all the fun cereal bars whether it's like oh, the fruit loop bars okay. or like the cheerio okay. bars there's gonna be a really awesome time that's and for awesome. high schoolers you guys Get High schoolers, a treat. get ready. Really? We making some bougie grilled cheese, okay? So what what goes into bougie grilled cheese? Hey, I don't know. Sounds like I get some like truffles, but bacon for sure in the grilled cheese, of course. Throw some ham. Maybe we'll get crazy with it. I don't know. It's going to be awesome. But hey, Grub Groups is an incredible time to dive deeper into your faith. I love that you guys are here on Wednesdays, but please dive into Grub Groups on Sundays as well. Like Kara said, j High. That's a 930 service, 1130 service. Right after the 1130 service, 9th through 11th graders, that's your time for Grub Group. So show up right at around 1 p.m. We eat, we hang out together, and then we split off into our life groups. So that's Grub Groups. Would love to see you guys there. But hey, we are like what? T minus six or seven weeks till summer? Woo! That I cannot believe it. Yes, we're like six weeks away. If you are in eighth grade to 12th grade, that means in like six and a half weeks, we are leaving from here on a bus to go to Florida. Who is excited? Wow. Hey, and that means also a couple weeks after that, we've got Freedom Week for you sixth and seventh graders. We're going to the mountains in Arkansas. It's gonna be so much fun. But hey, you have this month because on May 1st, the price for camp jumps up $50. So sign yourselves up. And Kara and I have been hearing from a lot of y'all Man, camp is just so expensive. Hey, we get that. We got to take buses across the country. We got to feed y'all. We got to, you know, go to some incredible camps. We understand it's expensive, but we've actually got a pretty cool thing showcasing a way that you guys can raise money. Listen, listen, listen. This is really awesome. A way that you can raise money and send yourselves to camp. It's called the Golf Hole Sponsorship. And we actually made a video starring some incredible students incredible, within the student ministry. Incredible so students. check it out up on the screens. This is the Golf Hole Sponsorship. Hey, student ministry, so camps are coming up and we're all super excited. I know it's hard to be able to afford camp and to be able to get there, but there's a really cool way using the golf pool sponsorship. It's not that hard. Just take the card and go to a local business that you think would want to support you. Once you're inside, introduce yourself and the form will explain everything for you. Just ask them if they would like to sponsor you. Hi, I'm Dee Dee. I'm here from Wilton's Church and I was really hoping if you could sponsor me to attend Beach Week this year. Not only do they get to give directly to our camp fund, but they also get a tax write-off and advertising for their business at the Student Ministry Golf Tournament. See, it's not that hard. Thanks to the golf tournament, we'll be at camp. Will you? Oh! Oh! 
I just want to tell all the students that guys like me are plentiful. We always want to give back to the students. And we just want you guys to feel comfortable to come and ask us for our help. We want to help you guys. So please, come see us. Come on, hey, give them a round of applause. That's awesome. You crushed that. Highlight of the video, Dee Dee's turn. <laughs> so let me open this door real quick. <laughs> but hey, it's not hard. The golf hole sponsorship, look, you don't play in the golf tournament unless your parents are awesome and want to get you out of school and do that. Here's how it works. Like they said in that video, you find a business. We have forms that we want to give you. It's a little paper card, and it explains most of it. But you say, hey, I'm trying to raise funds to go to camp this summer. Would you like to support me? You hand them that. They can write you a check for... $100 up to the full amount, depending on what, how generous they're feeling. They get, like the, the video said, they get a tax write-off, which is awesome for them, and they also get uh, advertising for their business. This is something that they want to do. I hope you saw Mr. Fig in that video. He loves the student ministry, and there are plenty of people out there that know and believe in summer camps and want to help you get there. So if you're willing, we encourage you to go out there, raise funds, and get yourself there. Year in and year out, this has been a really amazing tool that I'm really excited to see you guys take advantage to get yourselves to Beach Week, to get yourselves to Freedom Week because it is so, so worth yeah, it. And I know it can be scary sometimes to go and talk to an adult, but as you saw, Dee Dee and Nat and Ellis, they did it and you can do it too. And well, you know what, honestly, we'll, even, we'll pray for you before you go talk to an adult. That's We're right. here for you because we truly believe, just like Jordan was saying, Fig, there are so many people who love you, who want to sponsor you, and it just takes that simple, bit of courage to go and ask. So we look forward to seeing who all you guys get to bring to the golf tournament. It's going to be awesome. But Jordan, before we go into service, yeah. I really feel like it would be fun yeah. if we like played a game. If we played a game? That's yeah. crazy You know talk. how much I love that's to insane. play games. Hey, let's do this. Give it up for some amazing students. I got Grant and I got Jordan in the wings. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Here's the deal. Yes. Support. <laughs> Here's the deal. Guys, are you excited to potentially walk home with some incredible prizes? Yes. You are? Very excited. Very excited. Here's how this works. Grant, if you take the podium on this side. Jordan, if you come up on this side. I have before you a holy plate full of eggs. Meh. Meh. Within each egg, Kara. Yes. Get out of the shot. Sorry. Love you. Within each egg, you have the opportunity to share the prize, which I'll explain in a second, or steal the prize. Everybody say, ooh. Yeah. If you choose an egg, which you're about to do in a second, if you both choose share, everybody say, aww. Aww. You get to walk away with a delicious Hershey's chocolate bar. That you wow. guys can share. That's huh? great. And you get to like, share we'll it. We'll break it, we'll it off. Share it. Incredible. If you decide that you want to steal and your friend says share and you say steal, you're going to walk away with a $30 Canes gift card. Ooh. Okay? If you both say steal because you want the Canes gift card so bad, we have some delicious haggis prepared for you. Mm. Haggis is, uh, Stephen, correct me if I'm wrong, it is a meat from Scotland made from the innards of a sheep. Yeah. yeah. It is, it is. No correction needed. No correction needed, yeah. It is from the, 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 the stomach intestines of a sheep, and it is delicious. Delicious. So, so before you, again, I wouldn't say that. you have two eggs. You may inspect those eggs. Don't let him see. Don't let him see. You're going to look inside, see one of them will say steal. One of them will say share. It is up to you. Yeah, yeah, you see it? To decide which one you want. Oh, he's trying to look. Are you, are you playing defense on that? Yeah, because you, gotta, you, gotta you are around. about to decide. You don't decide. want them to know which egg you're going to choose. Yeah, can I get some, like, stressful music? I feel like that's exactly what I need. You see, are you remembering? Yeah. You've already decided. Wow. Uh, Jordan, I want you to uh, get with your guy Grant here, and, and you guys can work together on this. This looks uh, delicious. No, that does not. I this mean, does not you, look but delicious. But don't you want to go to Canes? Look, look, this, this is what we do, all right? This is what we do. We both pick share, all right? 
<laughs> hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. We both pick hair because I don't want to eat intestines. That's, that's the bottom line. Your response? Or, or no. I can just take this home. <laughs> no. That's I'll not share how it works. No, 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 no. No, I wouldn't no, no, have no, no, any no. ways. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's being honest. <laughs> Look, we share the Hershey's board. That's delicious. <laughs> no. And we stay safe from that. Oh, so you're thinking more about this than you are about that. I'm thinking more about this than that. And you're thinking that. more about this than anything else. Do yeah. you want to, like, give it a nice, like, smell? Like, you want to just smell the intestines? Yeah, I would maybe... Per it doesn't smell the worst. Oh, there's my stressful music. Oh, oh. it's in meat pie form, which, you know what? This doesn't look that bad. It looks oh. like a Reese's. But instead of like peanut butter, Reese's? instead of peanut butter, it's filled with sheep intestines. Oh. It's... Honestly, no. I think I would eat this. No, it's not no. that big of a deal. Bite. I think it's, it's worth the risk. I think you should go for it. Okay. It smells awful. Stephen, you've been to Scotland. Oh, it's not that bad. Because you're smelling the crust. Yeah, I bet the crust is really going to help you get that down. That All right, you better. know what you're going to choose? No. Look. Okay, well you're going to have to figure that uh, out. Okay. Look. Either you eat that, or you take the chocolate bar. You just take that out the picture. Either you eat, you eat the Hershey's bar. I don't want my bar. dinner to be a uh, sheep intestine, but I, I want it to be. Why not? It's a Scottish delicacy. Are you saying Seriously, that the Scottish don't know how to eat Scots? dinner? Is well, that what you're trying to say, Grant? That's dessert. I wonder what the regular dinner is. No, this is probably jelly pork. Uh, this is dessert <laughs> that you can share. Or we just split that. All right. Enough deliberation. I think you know what you need to do. Remember, if you both choose share, yummy chocolate. If you both choose steel, yummy haggis. If one of you says steel, yummy canes. And you know what, just to spice it up, the loser will get yummy haggis. Does that change it? Did I just? Did I just change it? Are you kidding me, Neil? All right. Do you have you decided? Yeah. Have you decided? You decided a long time ago. You're sticking yeah. with your decision. You literally have. Wow. All right. On the count of three, I want you to put in my hand which one you're ready to choose. One, two, two and a half. Do you not remember which egg is which? You forgot, didn't you? Nope. I'm embarrassed for you. Three. Put it in. Wow. Deliberation. Ooh. Wait, in Jordan's you know egg. This is Jordan's. You, how yeah, do you yeah. know? In Jordan's egg. Kara? Yes? Please read aloud what he has said. I have this piece of paper that says, steal! <laughs> he chose to steal! And Grant also said steal! They wanted the <laughs> canes! Which means <laughs> you guys, how dare you? I get the canes. Wait, no. I get the canes. Wait. I'll steal. Oh, wait, why did you bring Carter, that out? Carter, no. You brought out a, a barf bag. Why would you do that? This is a de Scottish right. delicacy, I remember? think here's what you should do. I think you should literally just hold, just grab it with a hand, and then because you're in this together, dink no. it, just cheers, and then a big old bite. Why would you do this? Ooh, I can't a wait. A big old bite. Go ahead, Jordan. Lead the way. Why does right. it feel like... Is it heavier than you thought? Oh. <laughs> Don't think about intestines while you eat it. I'm sorry, that's not helping. All right, everybody, let's encourage them. On the count of three, they're gonna take a bite. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Oh yeah, Great, show the camera. Great, you barely took a bite. You show only the got the flavor custard. Not that bad? Not that bad? Jordan, are you gonna move to Scotland? Are you going to the University of Scotland next year? Tell us year? your thoughts. <laughs> okay, so has anyone ever had beef patties? Sister, apparently. It's what it tastes like. No, Grant, Grant, I feel like you have a different, is it the, oh, look at that, that Grant, looks like intestine. Grant, you literally had a bite of the flaky pastry, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you, there's so much drool in your mouth. Is it spicy? So it's so bad. Talk to me about how bad it is. You gotta down it though. Just, Grant, 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 Grant. down it! Grant, yeah! yeah! Give it up for these guys! Their attempts to steal 
Wow, hold on to that because I might want that later. I'm never okay. going to Scotland. Congratulations, guys. Hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump into a time of worship, so stand on up. Let's get incredibly hyped for Jesus tonight. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to have some fun, and we're going to do it all in Jesus' name. Come on, student ministry. Let's go. This is my heart, my heart, my heart, it's broken again. These are my hands, my hands, my hands, I'll raise them to the end. This is my heart, my heart, my heart, it's broken again. These are my hands, my hands, my hands, I'll raise them to the end. There's something in the clouds, I can feel it forming, yeah. There's water in the ground, I can hear it rising. Come on, but when I don't, but when I don't see it, I will be singing. When I don't hear you, I know that I need you. This is my love, this is my life. This is my heart. 
is faithful, faithful in his promises, that even when we don't feel it, God, when we don't see it, we can still cling to your truth and know that you are good in the midst of doubt. Come on, we sing this. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, the faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Come on, we lift our voice.
God is so good and so faithful. Hey, let's pray. God, we love you. And God, I know that um, because you're just that good of a God, that every person who's in this place tonight, that you brought them to hear from your word, the message that's been prepared. I know it can be real easy to be distracted. It can be easy to be talking to a friend. But God, I pray that every student in this place would be ready to talk with you. to open up their hearts, to let you bring thoughts to their minds, to teach them, God, just about your love for them and how you wanna set them free from being enslaved to their emotions. So God, as we continue in this mood series, I just pray that you would, um, <laughs> you'd change our hearts. You bring us a freedom that can only come from you. We love you. It's in your sons and we pray. Everybody said, amen. amen. You can be seated. All right, so we're gonna dive into this Bible story. That's one of my most favorite Bible stories in scripture. And it's the story of two brothers from the very beginning, the first two brothers of all time, as far as we know it from scripture, Cain and Abel, right? So there was Adam and there was Eve. And we know Adam and Eve ate from the fruit of the tree um, that they shouldn't have in the Garden of Eden from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And because of that, there was a fall, right? Sin entered mankind. And the problem was, is that clearly it was passed down to their kids because we really don't see things turn for the better in Cain and Abel's story. And so kind of the way the Bible sets it up in Genesis chapter four is that Cain um, was a, uh, he was a, a, he was a, he was a shepherd. Uh, he had sheep, right? And that was one of the things that, um, excuse me, uh, Cain was a, a farmer. And so he was someone who cultivated the ground. He was someone who, uh, who helped uh, grow uh, um, produce and you know wheat, corn, whatever, fruits, veggies. That's what Cain was doing for a living. His brother Abel was the shepherd of the family, right? So he's taking care of the livestock. And so we played a game a second ago called Cain's and Abel's, p pitting Jordan against Grant, brother against brother, a story literally as old as time, right? And it goes, all the way back to the beginning. And that's, of course, why we brought in the sheep intestines because Abel was a shepherd and they ended up having to eat the sheep intestines. Um, I got a whiff of those backstage. Not so good, okay? Um, but it's an interesting story. Basically, here's what happens, okay? In this story, Cain and Abel, who are aware of the character and the nature of God because obviously Adam and Eve, their parents used to walk with God, understood the importance of connecting with God and bringing your best in any relationship. And so Adam and Eve, though they hadn't been perfect in that, had passed that down to their, to their sons, the importance of connecting with God and connecting with anyone through bringing your best. But Cain, decided to bring a gift to God. And it says this in scripture about his gift. You can read with me. Here's, here's some of the story. It says this, uh, uh, it said about Cain, that Cain brought some of his fruits. He didn't bring his best, but he brought something to God because he was checking it off. Some of you, you came to church tonight, not because you're excited about bringing the God, the first part of your week, the best part of your week, but you're checking it off. Mom and dad said that you should come, your friends are here, and it seems like a good thing to do to be religious, and so on some level, you're checking it off. You're doing what you're supposed to do. And you're looking for God to bless you. You're looking to say, oh, well, of course, God should do good things for me because I'm here, so why, is, why should my presence be different than anyone else's? But listen to what it says in Genesis chapter four, verses four through eight. Abel, Cain's brother, also brought a gift. Check this. Hey, back there in the back. Hey, back there in the back. Be quiet or go out. Are we clear? All right. Leaders, jump on that. All right, here we go. 
Now they're going to be mad. All right, here we go. All right. Abel author by the gift, the best portions of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry and he looked dejected. The Lord comes to Cain and he says this to them. <laughs> Why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? Why is your face fallen? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, catch this. The Lord said to him, watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. <laughs> but you must subdue it and be its master. God knew that in Cain's heart, when he brought, he checked it off and God said, there's not." You want me to connect with you? You're not even giving me your best. In what relationship can we really connect when one person doesn't bring their best? God says, I'm bringing my best into your life. I put forth my best in my creation of you. I bring my best into your life and you want to have a connected relationship with me, but you're not bringing your best? That's not the way this works. And for some of you, you've been coming to church and you're wondering, why am I not able to connect with God? There's a question. Are you bringing God your best? Are you just here? Or did you come here to really desire to connect with God and to say, God, I'm going to give you my best. Listen, if there was something else going on tonight, God, I would still make an effort to be here and put you first because, God, I give you my best. I'm going to give you the first part of my week. I'm going to give you the first part of my day. I'm going to give you the first part of my income. That's called the tithe, right? I'm going to give you 10% back, God, not because I have to, but because in any relationship where it's going to be healthy, I know that what I have to give you is my best. Now, for some of you, you're going to experience how important it is to give your best when you have the opportunity for you young men to ask a girl to marry you someday. And when you go and you say, hey, you know what? This is an important thing to me. I know Andrew knows what I'm talking about. I actually got oh, the yeah. privilege of doing Andrew and Rainey's premarital counseling. And, uh, and I had to talk with Andrew a lot because one of the things that Andrew had a real stumbling block getting over. Oh, uh, yeah, was the importance of getting Rainy this really expensive ring. I, I kid, it wasn't a big deal, but was it a big deal to Rainy? That huge, <laughs> the engagement ring? Absolutely, oh All my right. gosh. The, yeah, the importance of that diamond doesn't just say, you know, it's not just because it's your, that's what you're supposed to do. It says how valuable she is to you. Right on. Yeah. And on some level, if you say to this girl, babe, Don't say it like that, though. You mean the world to me. <laughs> so you know what I did? I got you a ring pop, girl. Cherry. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Sits right on there. <laughs> Same. You know what? In fact, I got you the 12-pack. Whoa! So they'll last us like three weeks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's a big old gym on there. So will you trust me with the rest of your life? What do you, mm. what do you mean no? What? On some level, you know that's not where it's at, right? That, on, that the principle of a guy saving and sacrificing is because that ring represents that I'm committed to giving you my best for the rest of my life. And when a guy really holds on to that attitude, when a guy's attitude is like, oh my gosh, these rings are so expensive. This whole relationship thing is so sacrificial. <laughs> but all right, stupid tradition, I'll just do it. But I'm gonna try to find like the discount one. <laughs> like I'm gonna try to find the wholesale one where that's like, you know, like the cheapest, like find, find I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look on eBay and see if I can get one like on a Facebook page of some guy who like tried to give it to a girl but she rejected him. I wanna get it on sale. <laughs> Save the money. Save the money. <laughs> it might like turn her finger green later, but it's gonna be <laughs> like it's gonna be pretty initially in the box. 
there's a good chance that that relationship's not gonna go where either, the, either of them might be hoping it would go. You see, when Cain brought his gift to God, he didn't bring his best. And so what did God do on some level? He said, I don't accept that. In order for this relationship to be what it can be, we both have to bring our best into the relationship. Some of you are guilty of being that kind of friend. You have a friend who's all in and you're 10% in. You're not really giving your best to the friendship or the connection and on some level it's brought about a lot of hurt. Maybe you've been really invested into a friendship only to find that your friends then went and hung out together and never invited you and you're left hurt. You're experiencing the rejection of what Cain was feeling and on some level you're mad. And so then here comes Abel and Abel comes and Abel gives of what he had but he gives the very best of his flock the very best that he had to offer. He comes in and says, God, I'm gonna give you the perfect, spotless, blameless lamb, the lamb that would bring me the most amount of money, the lamb that would have the best meat, the lamb that would be the most provision for my family. God, I'm gonna bring that best to you. And God looked upon Abel's offering and he was pleased with Abel and he was pleased with his offering. And so what does Cain do? Cain begins to stew in his heart. He's like, God, I just can't believe this. How is it that, that... God's relationship with Abel is flourishing and mine's not. I brought some fruit. I didn't want to give anything, but I came, I showed up, I brought my stuff. I came to church, I did my thing. I went to Beach Week, I went to do this. I went to the events, I went to do these things. Why is it that I see some people's relationship with God skyrocketing and mine's not? Where are you, God? Where have you been for me? And you get angry. You get mad just like Cain was mad. And God came to him and said, dude, why are you so angry? Don't you know that I want to be connected with you? If you're feeling far from me, know this. I want to be connected to your life. I gave you my best. I gave you my son. And he gave up his life for you on the cross. I've given you my best. And I continue to give my best every day. Would you be able to say that you feel like out of your desire to experience in connection with God that you're giving God your best? Does he get even five minutes before you take off to school? Does he get five minutes at the end of the night? And if he is getting five minutes, is that your best? And on some level, if you're not experiencing what you're looking for and you're wondering and you're frustrated and you're angry, God comes to Cain and he says, Cain, don't you understand that if you just turn and do what is right, that you'll be acceptable? I want to have a relationship with you. But this relationship doesn't work unless we both give our best. You want to be in a great relationship? It requires two people giving their best. And then he says to him, Cain, but watch out. Because if you don't choose to do what is right, if you don't change your heart, be careful because sin is crouching at your door. And its desire is to subdue you and to become your master. Students, a lot of you, you came into this place tonight and you know that you have an anger issue. When you get frustrated even a little bit, you go off on coach, on friend, on teacher, on mom, on dad, on person who cut you off, you go off, you have an anger issue. When things don't go your way, the anger emotion, the mood just comes flying out of you. With little thought about the potential consequence that could come, it just comes flying out. Words come flying out. Actions come flying out. Your face turns red. You just let people have it. You curse. You drop things. You say things that in your right mind you might not ever say, but you're angry. 
What right did they have to do that? A friend doesn't respond the way that you want to. A ball hits you in the head. Something doesn't go your way. You strike out in the game. You get embarrassed. You get a pimple. You get something. Someone makes fun of your clothes. Someone makes fun of your hair. Someone makes fun of your shirt. And what does it do? It just, it just, makes, it just ruins your day. The anger comes flying out of you because what has happened is you have allowed it to subdue you and become your master and now you are a slave to your anger. For some of you, it's anger towards yourself. You you do something and then you're just so mad at yourself. Why did I say that stupid thing? Why did I post that stupid thing? Why did I uh, uh, um, do that stupid thing to my friend? And so you get angry at yourself. You can't forgive yourself. You're so mad. What has happened? You've become a slave to that emotion. It's now controlling you. Your anger has to find an outlet. So it happens in rage. Maybe it happens in cutting. Maybe it happens in some sort of expression where you're now trying to express your anger either towards yourself or towards someone else. And you just become subdued and controlled by your anger and by your emotion. You become just like Cain. God says, Cain, you've got to get it under control or it will subdue you and become your master. This is what happens. Did Cain listen? No. So one day, Cain suggested to his brother, let's make things right, man. Let's go out. (laughs) Let's go into the fields together, brother. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Now here's what's crazy. I think there's a good chance that Cain and I, Abel probably had some really good times as brothers. There probably were some times when they laughed really hard, played really fun games together. And then Cain got hurt. And somewhere in his hurt, he lost what he knew to be good and just completely gave in to that emotion Mm -hmm. and gets to a place of where he completely forgets the consequences of his actions, is subdued and controlled by his anger and ah, just lashes out on his brother. And then what happens? (laughs) The very next verse says that God shows up. And he calls out and he says, hey, Cain, where's your brother? (laughs) Cain says, (laughs) can you just imagine that when God says, hey, just like you do when you lash out in your anger, what you doing? What you been doing lately when you act out against yourself or act out against someone else? Where's your brother, Cain? Cain just responds, and <laughs> how am I supposed to know? <laughs> because you killed him and left him in the field, so you know exactly where he is. And he says, Cain, what have you done? Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. And then Jesus brings a fresh spin to this in the New Testament. When he says, some of you say, oh, but Mark, Mark, I would never kill someone. I'm good. My anger's nowhere near that. Jesus says, if you have even hated your brother in your heart, you're guilty of murder. A lot of you, when you saw what Cain's reaction was, you were like, ooh, dude just slayed his brother in the field. Man, that's harsh. Jesus says, for those of you who've held hate in your heart towards someone, you're guilty of the Mm. same sin. I'm so mad at them. They betrayed me. I can't believe my friend did that. I can't believe this person who was supposed to be a caretaker in my life, a mom, a dad, a step parent, a coach, a teacher, a someone in my life. I can't believe that they weren't there for me. I can't believe they did this. And so I have a right to hold on to my anger. You are being controlled by an emotion. 
You have allowed yourself to become a slave to something that's desire is to subdue you and become your master. If you find yourself in someone who is constantly flying off the handle at people, you get upset easily, you're yelling, you let things off, you blow off steam. This is the happiest I've ever seen the student ministry. Why? Because you get to beat on a car on your way in, right? <laughs> Some of you are like, I'll show you, I'll be home at curfew. <laughs> How dare you break up with me? <laughs> you posted this on social media. <sighs> Ooh, it was therapy out there tonight, right? I mean, you guys are the best you've looked in years. <laughs> Coming in here all refreshed, took things out. Some of you, I was like, I had to take the sledgehammer away. I was like, calm down. You're like, you were like naming it. You were like, Sarah! <sighs> Sledding it out on the vehicle, man. Was, Some of you need to get a punching bag. <laughs> Invest in one, okay? It helps. <laughs> Carbash was doing some work out there. It's okay to be angry. Yeah, God gave you the emotion. But listen to what it says in Ephesians 4, 26 through 27. It says this. Can you hear this? In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And check the second part out. And do not give the who? the devil, a foothold. You see, what you don't realize what you're doing when you let yourself be overcome with that anger towards yourself, when you let yourself be overcome by that anger towards someone who has hurt you, you're giving the devil a foothold into your life to be able to use that anger to get you to do something that is going to take you away from what God created you for, connection and fulfillment. But Mark, you don't understand, my parents aren't fair. What parents are fair? <laughs> the question is not about whether or not your parents are fair. Your parents are doing the very best that they can from the way that God's created them and where they're at. The question is, is about whether or not you're gonna let yourself be controlled by the anger that is coming out of you, that is being harbored in you because of what you feel like was handed down to you that's not fair. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to look at something and say, that wasn't right. This isn't good. That's not what should have happened. That's not the way I should have been treated. But in your anger, do not sin. Let your anger motivate you on some level would be to say, that's not right. And I'm gonna let that anger motivate me to do what is right. But that is not about expressing it through anger. It's about allowing yourself to be motivated to go and to be able to get yourself into a place, to have the conversation, to be able to move that relationship back into a place where it's healthy. To work through it with that person, to be able to get yourself out of that mindset where you're being controlled by anger and instead being controlled by the Holy Spirit. I love what it says in Proverbs 14, 29. It says, people without understanding, excuse me, people with understanding control their anger. A hot temper shows great foolishness. <laughs> Have you ever just lost yourself in your anger? Has that ever been you where like you, you got so angry and then you just did stuff that you didn't, you can't even, you don't even know where it came from? Like, this, <laughs> this used to define me. I don't know why I was talking with Jordan and Carter about it backstage, is that anger used to be something that just lived in me in my teenage years. And if I'm being totally real with you, I don't, I'm not completely sure if it came from my insecurities about wanting to be accepted and connected and liked and loved or believing that people just had to be fair towards me, but anger was a serious thing that I dealt with. If I got hit in the head with a soccer ball randomly, it was like, what came out of me? It was, I felt on some level like what, how the Hulk is depicted in Marvel, right? Of where it was like, when the green guy came out, it was like there was no thinking involved. It was just... It was so embarrassing. Some of the things that I said, some of the things that I, I the way that I treated friends, some of the way that I, I acted at home, the way that I would lose my mind. And you know what's so funny? If you've ever lost your temper, 
and I know many of you have probably even this last week, when you're done, I can't remember one time where I've just lost my temper on someone or did something like you're so angry and you punch a wall, you're like, that afterwards you're like, you know what, that was a good choice. <laughs> that, that's what I needed to do, I feel. Yeah, I, I may have broken my hand. It hurts a lot, but it, you know what, that's a good choice. Or having just let someone have it, you idiot, what's wrong with you? Get out of my room! You dummy, I don't even wanna be your sister anymore! Boom, slam the door. You know what, that worked out. <laughs> that, I feel good. I feel like we're gonna be able to build from this. I think they heard my heart. <laughs> Feeling like I'm in a good place. I hate you, mom and dad! You're the worst parents in the world and I never wanna see your face again! Yeah, you know what? That's good. Whoo! Good choice. Glad I Yo. went there. <laughs> felt like I was out of control, but think that really just needed to happen. Never. Every time after I let myself be subdued by that emotion and I let it out, what it always produces, hear me? It always produces death. Think about it. It brings awkwardness into that friendship. It brings more frustration between your mom and your dad. It brings deeper tension in that relationship. You act out against yourself. Stupid, 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 stupid. Yeah, you know what, that worked really happy about that decision making. Felt really mature. Felt like that's what needed to happen. <laughs> that's where I should be. I think I was in a good mindset. In fact, so much so, I'm gonna take this on the road. Hey boys and girls, I'm your motivational speaker for the day. Feeling angry, feeling hurt, feeling mad, just punch yourself in the head. <laughs> Junior high kiddos, are you feeling low? Make yourself efficient. Just take it right on your eyeball. <laughs> Amazing what can happen. Hey there, little four-year-old. You look upset. Don't worry about throwing your toys. Just stomp on your own foot. <laughs> I'm so, I've lost myself up here. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Are you with me though? That's how you look. That's what it's like when you give the devil a foothold. You just make a fool of yourself. So why do we keep giving anger such a stronghold into our life? Listen to what it says in James chapter four. It says this. <laughs> What is causing the, all the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they just come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and you kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. <laughs> you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you do ask him, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You only want what gives you pleasure. Paul lays out a better way in Colossians 3, 12 through 14. He says this. Since God has chosen you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you so you must forgive others. And above all, 
clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace, don't miss this. If you wanna memorize a verse, memorize this one. In Colossians 3, 12, 15, it says this. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. Always be thankful. You wanna show that you have maturity in your heart and in your life. Mark, I'm really growing up. I don't wanna just be a kid anymore. You gotta be able to stop and think. When have you ever yelled at mom or dad and it actually brought about the result you were hoping for? Do you want your way or do you want a right relationship? When have you ever just let loose on that friend and it produced what you were hoping it would produce? Do you wanna be right or do you want a right relationship? When have you ever just blasted a friend or a coach or a pastor behind their back about something they're doing to another friend. You just gossip behind their back and let someone know about how terrible your parents are, how terrible that coach was. And then afterwards, when you saw them, been like, you know what? Now that I've talked horribly behind their back, I can't wait to see them. Don't you see how good the enemy is at destroying your life? It's not that your anger in itself is sin, but your anger has a desire to control you. And some of you, many of you, you're just letting it. Man, let's grow up together. Let's let our schools see what a group of teenagers can do and what we can be like when we choose to clothe ourselves with humility, kindness, making allowance for each other's faults. Is that what level I'm held to? In order to be your student pastor, do I have to be perfect? Because I can't handle that. In order to make sure that you're speaking well of the student ministry and of me? Do I have to make every message be perfect and on point? Does it have to be funny every week? Is that where the line for our love is drawn? Do I have to wear the right stuff? Do I have to remember to say hi to you every time? What's the standard that you hold me to? Is that what love looks like? That we are committed to each other until we hurt each other? Right on. What does maturity look like in your friendships? How many ex-friends do you have behind you? That's probably a good sign of your maturity. If you find yourself in a world where you're constantly blocking, turning to new friend groups, there's a good chance the problem's not them, it's you. There's no room for fault. There's no room for forgiveness. We're just completely controlled by anger. What's the standard for your parents? They gotta get it all right? loving you and sustaining you to the point that you are, does that carry anything? I'm not saying that they're perfect parents. There is no perfect parent. But have you loved them on any level in the way that they've loved you? Have you been there for them even close to the amount of times that they've been there for you? 
What right do we have to just let loose in our anger in such a way? Let's grow up together. Let's pray. God, I love you. And God, I pray that you would help us to demonstrate our love for each other and our love for you by being able to make allowance for each other's faults. <laughs> God, I we must look so silly to you and we just give in to our anger and just act out in a teen temper tantrum. We can do better. God, help us to do better. So God, as we go into this time of worship, God, I pray that what would fill our hearts is the peace of Christ. being able to remember the forgiveness that's been given to us and that, God, we would take this opportunity to be able to extend that forgiveness to others. God, we don't wanna be babies anymore. We wanna grow up. We don't want to just be loved. God, we want to love the way that you love us. And that anger, God, is... It's a tough one to shake. So God, I pray for the student ministry that you'd give us the ability in the midst of our hurts to not go into Hulk mode, but to be able to stop and think and give access and room back to the Holy Spirit that we might be able instead to choose to fight for the relationship instead of fighting from our hurt. We love you, God. We give this time of worship to you. It's in your sons. Let me pray. Amen.
ready to let the light in, to expose all the darkness, to expose all the hurt. Come on, sing this out. Open up the windows, let the light in. Open up the windows, let the light in. Open up the windows, let the light in. Let the light in. Let the light in. Open up the windows, let the light in. Open up the windows, let the light in. Come on, you ready to let the light into your life? To bring life, to bring healing, to bring peace, come on. Open up the windows, let the light in. Open up the windows, let the light in. Open up the windows, let the light in.
Amen, amen, amen. Hey, we got a couple more songs in worship, but it is that time, it's 8.15. If your parents are here, do not keep them waiting. Like Pastor Mark said in the message, let's love them in that way. But hey, I wanna encourage you guys, eyes here, eyes here, just so you know, uh, we love you guys and we want you guys to get the most you can get out of what it is that we're doing here. We heard a lot of talking during service tonight, a lot of people getting up to go to the bathroom, a lot of people sitting all over the room. We want to encourage you guys, while you're here, focus in, because we believe in what God is doing in the student ministry. We want it to be something that you can let change your life. This gospel that we talk about, this Jesus that we talk about is so worth it. So I encourage you guys in that way. That's right, and don't miss out this Sunday. Be here for Grub Groups, junior high, 9th through 11.30, high school at one o'clock. And then don't forget, next week, mood, we're continuing on, and we're gonna have Texas Roadhouse rolls. It's gonna be awesome. So don't miss out, we'll see you here next week. Let's continue in worship, guys, come on.
Y'all are amazing. The people have spoken. All right, guys, let's get it going. Who's ready to party? You ready to party? You? Staring into your eyes, it's my heart come alive. Suddenly brought to life when I met you. See it out. We're reaching beyond the stars, running deep, stretching wide. Perfect love being eyes when I met you. This love is for you, you will never let go. Just was living out of control, out of control. Hands up! This is real love, this is real love. This is real love, this is real love.